Welcome to your lesson on 4.1, graph and quadratic equations when they're in standard form. Remember, standard form looks like this. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we've got a ton of things to do in this lesson. Uh, number one, starting off, we're going to find the intercepts of the graph. Intercepts, that's the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Uh, find the vertex point and the axis of symmetry. Symmetry as a word, well, if you look over here at the flipping math logo, it has some symmetry. It's being reflected across the line y equals x. Okay, the second thing we're going to do is determine what happens whenever you change the parameters on that equation. By the parameters, I mean a, the b, and the c. If you change those things, what happens to the graph? Hmm, good question. Number three, we're going to find the minimum or the maximum value of a parabola. How high does it go? How low does it go? And finally, number four, putting all those things together to graph some parabolas when these equations are in standard form. So let's look at some vocabulary here. So what the heck is a parabola? Parabola is that kind of U-shape. It could look like this. Or maybe it could be upside down like that. I think you're familiar with that term. Parent function is the simplest member of a group of set of functions. So like y equals x, that's the linear parent function. y equals x squared is, is the quadratic. y equals x cubed is the cubic, and so on. Vertex is the little turning point on our parabola. Axis of symmetry, it's going to cut this thing right in half, like so. X-intercepts, let me just draw myself an x-axis here, just where it touches the x-axis. Let me put a y-axis uh, in there, that's where it touches the y-axis. Minimum and maximum point, you can see that that is the point on the parabola, as low as it goes and how high it goes. And then finally, perpendicular bisector. This is from geometry. If you draw yourself a segment and you want to draw a line that, ooh, that's a terrible line. You're going to draw yourself a line that is perpendicular to it and goes straight through the midpoint. That's a perpendicular bisector. So, on to our first objective. You're going to be able to find the intercepts, the x and the y intercepts of a quadratic equation, find the vertex point and the axis of symmetry of the parabola. So I chose this picture because it displays a parabola in the shape of a part of a bridge and of course the vertex point is right up here at the top. It's the maximum point on this one and can you imagine a line that just cuts this thing down the middle? It's very symmetrical. Same on the left side it is on the right side. Okay. So, this first warm-up, I'm going to show you or remind you how to do this little construction on patty paper. Maybe you did something like this in geometry. I'm going to take a piece of patty paper and I'm just going to draw myself a segment on it, segment AB. Okay. The next step is you're going to fold that piece of patty paper so that point A and point B lay right on, hop, right on top of each other the, so they coincide. And then go ahead and make that crease. Whenever you unfold it, it makes a crease Go ahead and, and draw yourself a line in that crease, and that crease is the perpendicular bisector of the segment. It goes through the midpoint and is perpendicular to it. Let me draw that on here. It goes through the midpoint, so those two pieces of the segment are the same, and is perpendicular to it.
So, we're going to do much the same thing on uh, a picture of a parabola. So, the graph of a quadratic function is this U shape that is called a parabola, and the points where it touches the x axis are, of course, called the x intercepts. Now, what I need you to do right now is go ahead and print yourself out a copy of this parabola so that you can do the little activity and take some notes on it as well. This is available on my website. Take a look. All right, so we're at my website. We're going to find our parabola handout. So we go over here to Algebra 2 and then scroll down to Unit 5. And within the Unit 5, we're at 4.1. There's all the stuff associated with this lesson. And then here is the parabola handout. It's a PDF file. Just open it. It has two pictures of graphs whenever this comes up. Just print that thing out. You only need one of them. Chop it in half. And all this rest of this blank space here, why don't you just go ahead and use that to take some notes on. And you can, you can go ahead and take some notes on the picture of the, of the parabola too. Okay, so now what I want you to do is do what I did at the opening activity, and that was to create yourself a perpendicular bisector. The two points that you're going to fold on top of each other are the two x-intercepts, this point and this point. So you're going to fold your parabola basically in half so that those two points coincide. So when you're done, you should get this fold line right here. And this fold line is the axis of symmetry. The word symmetry means that you can do a transformation, and after you do the transformation, your picture hasn't changed. So we can reflect across this line of symmetry, left and right, and our parabola is still the same. For example, take a look at this x-intercept. It's one two and a half away from the axis of symmetry and one two and a half for the other x-intercept. They're the same distance apart. So also notice that this axis of symmetry passes through the vertex point on our parabola. And that's a pretty useful piece of information. As a matter of fact it's going to help us figure out how to come up with the uh, the coordinates given the equation for a quadratic equation. So now let's move on, talk about uh, specifically everything about the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula in standard form. Of course it's written y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and maybe it should go without saying that a is not equal to zero. If a was equal to zero, what would you have? I'll pause for a second and let you think about that for a second. That's right, a line. Okay, you'd have a line. So the A, the B, and the C, they're parameters. And I can change these parameters, and when I do, it's going to do some stuff to that parabola. It might make it fatter or skinnier. might move it up or down, and um, it might flip it over. Yes. Okay. So we already said this graph is a parabola, and... Uh, its parent function is y equals x squared. That's the simplest form of that equation that we could get. And now usually what we do is we do transformations on that parent function so we can get something a little bit more complicated. The vertex point is the turning point on your parabola. It marks the highest or the lowest point on your graph. So for the one that's pictured there, of course it's the lowest one. To make a highest point, your parabola just has to be upside down, like so. And that one would be the, a maximum point. So it's called a turning point because if you look from left to right, right now your parabola is decreasing. The values are going down, 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 down until it reaches the vertex. And then it turns and starts going up, 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 and starts increasing. 
axis of symmetry as we did in our little folding activity. So the line passes through the vertex and it divides that parabola into two mirrored halves. This is very, very important. It helps you graph it because if you could just graph a half of it, you can get the other half for free because they're the same distance apart. Take a look at this y-intercept. This y-intercept right now is 3, and it's 1, 2, 3 and a half away from the axis of symmetry. And so if you reflect it, 1, 2, 3 and a half on the other side of the axis of symmetry. Okay, so here's a couple of questions. What is the domain for any quadratic function? Well, a quadratic function is in that form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So there's no square roots in there. I'm not dividing by zero, so there's nothing I can't stick in for x. So my domain is all real numbers, just like it is for any polynomial equation. Okay. The range, though, won't always be all real numbers. Explain how the vertex of a parabola affects the range of the function. So let's go back to the picture for just a second. If I look at this picture, range is up and down. It's all the y values. And I can see from this picture that the lowest point on the graph is a little bit below negative 3. And my graph would never go below that. But it would go up above it. So the answer to this question, vertex is the highest or the lowest point in your range. So you'll need to know that before you can write down whatever it is your range is for your function. If the vertex of a parabola is h comma k, just in general, and some variables, what is the equation of the axis of symmetry? So let me sketch you a little picture here. So if I have myself a, a graph, why don't I go ahead and draw this one upside down like so. Okay, here's my vertex. It's at h comma k. And my axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes right straight through it, perpendicular to the x-axis. It's a vertical line. And how do you write the equation of a vertical line? it's always x equals something. And that something is whatever x value it goes through. So let's look back at the picture. What x value is this line always going through? It's always going through the x value of your vertex. So in this case, it's x equals h. So here is the equation for your axis of symmetry, where h is the x value of your vertex. Hmm. Next question. Let's say that the vertex of a parabola is 2, negative 2. Just like you can see in the picture there. If the y-intercept of the parabola is at 0, 6, what other points got to lie on your graph? Well, as we were talking about, if we just throw ourselves in an axis of symmetry and just count over, this is 1, 2 over on the right, I need it 1, 2 over on the... Did I say that right? 1, 2 on the left, and 1, 2 spaces on the right. There we go. So the coordinates that also have to be on there are, this is 4, 6. And again, it's that aspect of symmetry that's going to help us graph some of these quadratic equations.